Oh, dude. Now I know what they meant by a blast from the past. I think it's about time we got back to the future with a band from my hometown, L.A., Metallica. These boys were part of a new wave of heavy metal in the early 80s, rebelling against the older bands they thought were going soft. And believe me, I could name names. Putting the heavy and the metal back into heavy metal has made Metallica stars everywhere from Yugoslavia to Japan. Here they are in a kick-ass show at London's Hammersmith Odeon. <laughs>
me and James have had Metallica going for, you know, about seven years now. When I was hanging out with one of my friends back then, he had was interested in starting a sort of heavy metal fanzine, and he had come over to my house one day and asked me, he had a list of about 15 or 20 different heavy metal, you know, names, and he, he asked me which ones of these I thought he should call his magazine. So I looked over the list and saw all these, you know, heavy metal this, heavy metal that, blah, blah, blah. And the name Metallica was on there, so I thought that was quite a good name. So I quickly thought to myself that I should steal that from him. So I just took that and basically told him to call his magazine something else, which he then did. And then when I finally got my own band together, I called it Metallica. <laughs> hey, cheers, everybody. You guys are fucking quiet out there. I can't hear you, man. Do you guys want to do some singing tonight or what? You guys want to do some singing? All right, uh, you got the album Kill Em All? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get you somewhere. Well, this is a fucking song where everyone gets like fucking hella together and gets as loud as they fucking want to. All right! So, uh, this one goes something like uh, Seek and
in 1980, there was this whole thing that was breaking out in this country, which was called, as you know, the new wave of British heavy metal, which greatly uh, interested me. Just when bands like Iron Maiden, Def Leppard, Motorhead, Saxon were starting to break out in a big way, and I was reading all you know the press, like sounds and so forth, and getting all the records. I think what it did was a direct result of the whole punk thing just a few years earlier where it really sort of, I think heavy metal was really pumping itself up and up through the late 70s and you know the big traditional rock star things and the big jets and everything was really reaching sort of a sky limit that was getting a bit silly. And I think that the new wave of British heavy metal brought the whole thing back down to the street and also reflecting on some of the things that I think punk brought into it, which was bands making their own demo tapes and, and sending them around and making independent 7-inch and 12-inch singles and so forth and, and doing that sort of stuff. I think that musically, uh, it borrowed some of the stuff from the punk thing that bands like Iron Maiden and Saxon and Motorhead were obviously a lot more energetic than some of the more plodding stuff back in the, in the early 70s, but I think lyrically, we were still in the same cliche-written territory. <laughs> which is, you know, the dungeons and the dragons and the, you know, sex and the women and, and some of these silly things, which is some of the stuff that we tried to avoid up through the years. But lyrically, that was probably the smallest advancement that was made. <laughs> so what kinds of things do you write about? What do we write about? Well, we have over the last couple of years tried to avoid some of those things and concentrated more on, on some of the things that we see around us in real life. <laughs> And um, a lot of people keep asking me if I think that Metallica lyrics are specifically negative or grim or gloomy or... or I think that we just more reflect on, on, on some of the, the actual real things that we see around us. And I think that it's better to say that the Metallica lyrics are more like an honest interpretation of, of some of the stuff out in the real world instead of trying to f paint all these fake facades and pretend that everything is just so brilliant and, and walk around smiling all the time. <laughs>
I really do not like categorizing Metallica, and I think that some of these categories that we've put in over the last couple of years really do not sort of give a fair fair picture of how much different stuff that we do. And um, which now, I mean, have you been uh, the names of these categories escape me. <laughs> You'll not get me to say them. <laughs> um, we've been put in some of these extreme left categories. One of them starts with a T and so forth. And it just, huh? I can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> Thrash.
What seems to be happening now a lot in, in heavy, whatever you want to call it, is that people are so worried about things like guitar players are very worried about, you know, speed and things like that. Drummers are very, you know, play as fast as they can and being as flashy as possible. And, and I think what is going on is that I think most people sort of care more about those kind of things than an actual feel for the music, which I think is very dangerous. And I think that the current heavy metal scene is, is really moving away from from when I think that it peaked in, you know, 81, 82. I think that bands have no sort of individualities anymore. They have no personalities. They're all just sort of, everyone's just copying what everyone else is doing. Everyone is playing it very, very safe. No one is sort of just taking chances and sort of trying to do things a bit different. But, like, I'm really worried about that people are really losing, like, a feel for the music, which is something that I think through the 60s and the 70s and up to a few years ago, people, you know, the whole thing was very much centered around people's feel for, you know, different instruments and feels for songwriting and so forth. Oh, excuse me, darling. I was just adjusting my set. Well, gang, it's been a bang. That's right, it's been a bang, gang. But remember, we've got a date tomorrow for another head-splitting double feature here on Heavy Metal Heaven. Yes, we'll be welcoming that bat-fighting bane of fine, upstanding Christians everywhere, Ozzy Osbourne. Then crank up your head bones as we take a slash into thrash with Napalm Death and Slayer. Mmm, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. 
Till then, this is Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, your favorite dream ghoul, wishing you unpleasant dreams.